start speaking from this book titled, When Am I Ready? One of the most common questions I get is, hey, pastor, how do I know I'm ready for love? How do I know I'm ready for relationship? There's a way to know if you are ready. I'll pick, speak a bit from this book, and it's, it'll be available after the service. You can get it. Remember, we'll do some book signing after. Please invest in yourself. So how do I know I'm ready? The first thing I need to address is your perspective. Come on, say with me, perspective. Say it loud, I say perspective. You see, your perspective is like your view of something. Your perspective. If you are going to have a good marriage, we must first address your perspective of marriage. Because your perspective is like your expectation. And what you expect is what you accept. Did you get that? What you expect is what you what? Accept. Once you have an expectation that marriage will be a certain way, you will begin to accept it as normal. And one of the things I constantly say is that you need to be sure if your normal is normal. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Let me ask your neighbor, is your normal normal? Your perspective matters. Some people believe, for instance, that marriage must be had. It's a necessary evil. If you have that perspective, what you expect is what you accept. You lay the foundation of your marriage from your perspective. See, all the things we are enjoying in our marriage, <laughs> like where, where we were this morning, where we said we were married for 17 years, people were like, wow, such a long time. And you guys are still fresh. You guys are still in love. You see, we expected it. That was our perspective from beginning. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? It's the foundation. If you believe that marriage is going to be tough for you, that is what you are going to get. What you expect is what you accept. You have a way of attracting your expectation. If you believe that there is no good man or no good woman, you know there are some of you that talk like that. That there's no good man in Accra. <laughs> that the men in Accra, the men in Accra, some of you secretly in your heart, you even say there are no good men in empowerment. I'm a prophet too. <laughs> in relationship issues. <laughs> Or some of you say there are no good ladies in empowerment. No. First of all, you don't need men. It's one you need, one man. Don't busy yourself about men. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Don't busy yourself about men. It's just one you need. Out of the how many billions of men, this was only one that is your concern. So stop saying African men, Ghana men, empowerment men. Stop saying that. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Number one, you don't know all the men in this world. Number two, you don't know all the men in Ghana. Number three, you don't know all the men in empowerment. So don't busy yourself. Your perspective matters. What are you telling yourself? There are no good women. There are no good men. No. What do you believe about marriage? What have your parents passed on to you? Sometimes you need to unlearn what you saw in your parents' marriage. You saw your parents fighting. And for some of you, you think it's okay to beat a woman. You think it's okay to insult a man. You grew up seeing emotional abuse from your mother. Your mother will wash your dad down, turn him upside down, and put him right way up again. <laughs> and you think it's normal to be emotionally abusive or insultive to a man. Or you're a man, you watched your dad bully your mom, and you think that's normal. That's why I say you need to check if your normal is normal. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Yours, your perspective. Do you believe you must fight in marriage? You know, I put that believe that that in every marriage there must be fight. If that is your perspective, that's what you are going to get. Of course, as two human beings, it's possible you will have opposing views. That is normal, but it must not become a quarrel. It must not become an insult, a, 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 a bout, a, a, a fighting bout, where you say idiot, bastard, useless. You know that people that use such words for their spouse. You're a useless man. You're a stupid man. You're a foolish woman. Somebody that you marry. Somebody you say you love. If that is your perspective of marriage, then that's what you're going to get. When we got married, we made, there are some agreements we had. We said we would never fight in this marriage. And I kid you not, for 17 years, we've not had the first fight. I kid you not. We, we usually don't like saying these things publicly because it annoys some people. But I'm at home. I can talk freely. Somebody getting what I'm saying? 
Does it mean we don't disagree? We disagree a lot. We are, we are two different people. Like I said, maybe when I come again, I'll tell you about differences. And not, we always agree. A lot of things about us are opposites. Opposites usually attract. My wife loves cold places. I love hot places. The first thing she does when she enters a room is to put on the AC. The first thing I do when I enter a room is to put off the AC. Ask all the guys that, that have been driving us from empowerment throughout. The first thing I do when I enter the car, we say them, turn down the AC. That's the first thing I tell them. So we are opposite. If my wife steps out of the room, I put off the AC, open the windows. <laughs> so we have a lot of, I'm trying to show you that we have a lot of opposing views and opposing ideas of life, but we had agreed from the beginning we will never quarrel. If you have any issues, talk, don't suck. That's the language we have. Talk, don't suck. So you can have such vision for your marriage from the beginning. That, hey, when we disagree, let's talk. There will be no insults in this marriage. I've been married 17 years, she has not used the first rude word. She has not insulted me once. She has not disrespected me once. I kid you not. And you know, we are, we are classmates in secondary school. So there's enough ground for her to disrespect me. We are mates in secondary school. Do you understand? Apart from that, even when we finished secondary school, she went ahead to do BSc, now do master's. She had master's. I have OND. You know OND? <laughs> o is ordinary. But yet, we've not had the first insult. You know, there are some people that if they just have BSc, they won't let anybody hear what. Some people, they just travel out of the country for the first time. Just travel out of, out of, out of Ghana into Burkina Faso and just come back. <laughs> and they'll just feel nobody can talk to me. <laughs> is somebody getting what I'm saying? So your perspective matters. We had those perspectives. That we will not fight in this marriage. There will be no insults in this house. We had agreements. We will, not quarrel in, we will never quarrel, disagree in front of the kids. We always have a united front. Is somebody get what I'm saying? Because there are people that, yes, you can give the Lord praise. There are people that in front of their kids, you see the two parents having a full-on war, and the children are supporting and betting who will win. <laughs> Say, mommy will win again. I bet you 20 bucks. <laughs> Mommy's going to win again. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? What is your perspective? Some of you believe that all men cheat. <laughs> I told you I was a prophet. I warned you. <laughs> it's all men cheat. Listen, I'm telling you, I have to talk to someone during the week that had that kind of issue. She said, Well, all men cheat. If you think like that, from cheating to move to polygamy, Satan never stays where you leave him. That's why they say, Neither give place to the devil. Don't give him a foothold because he will take the ground, he will take territory. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? What is your perspective? If your parents had a bad marriage, you need to unlearn that and begin to create a picture of a good marriage. Find a place where you can see a picture of a good marriage. It might be a mentor here in church. It might be a family here in church or, or, or anywhere. A couple you will look at to, 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 to work on your mind so that you make sure you're not expecting trouble. Some people believe that in your marriage, your husband, your husband must be physically beat each other. When the lady told me that, I said, then you better go and get a first aid box. What is your perspective? What you expect is what you accept. So that's the first thing. If you're going to say whether you're ready for marriage, I need to know what you're thinking about marriage. How do you see your finances? Do you believe that my money is my money and your money is our money? Ladies, I'm talking to you now. <laughs> Wrong perspective. Some of you, your mom have told you, look, when you get married, be hiding your money. Don't show your husband all your money. Don't show your wife all your money. No women can spend. Don't show her. All those things are not biblical standards of marriage. Because your perspectives must be formed through biblical standards, not cultural standards. Before culture, there was scripture. Come on, say with me, perspective. No, say it like you mean it. Say perspective. There are many of them, I don't want to waste time. But the important thing is that make sure your belief about marriage is based on what God himself said about marriage. Hallelujah. Second thing, if you want to know when you are ready, is what is your purpose? What is your purpose? You need to find your purpose. This is one of the chapters in this book. What is your purpose? Because you need a purpose for life before you pick a partner for life. Oh, someone didn't hear what I said. I said, you need a purpose for life before you pick what? A partner for life. It's not every partner that will fit your purpose. 
And you see, after salvation, or, or with salvation, one of the things you receive is purpose. Purpose will help you screen who to marry and who not to marry. There are some people you ought not to even pray about. Because by your understanding of your calling and purpose in life, you know that you guys are not headed in the same direction. If you're a pastor, please don't marry a businessman's wife. Because for a businessman, everything is balance sheet. It's profit and loss. You see, a pastor cannot marry that. Of course, I said the pastor has a business outside of the church. Definitely, that's fine. But if it's a full-time pastor, you can't marry a business. Because in ministry, sometimes we spend more than whatever comes in. People don't know that. We spend more than... We, we, we don't look at profit in ministry based on cash. We look at it in terms of lives. Souls that are touched. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? <laughs> Purpose for life. There's a common story I used to share, but some of you are young. You might not know these people I'm mentioning, but let me mention it. There's a common story I share. Imagine you're a pretty young lady here and two brothers in church want to marry you. They are both brother Mike, brother Mike. Which one will you choose, brother Mike one or brother Mike two? Okay, you don't know which one. Let me explain first, further. Your purpose as brother Mike, your own purpose as a lady is to sing. You want to have a great band. You want to, you want to, you, 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 you want to sing with Maverick City. You want, to, you want to sing internationally. You understand what I'm saying? You want to be big in terms of singing. That's your purpose. And two brothers, brother Mike, brother Mike, that are asking you for marriage. You don't know the one to choose. Let me explain now. Brother Mike one is brother Mike Tyson. Brother Mike two is brother Mike Jackson. Which one will you choose now? Michael Jackson. If it just features in your album, everybody will hear it. He doesn't even do anything. He just will say, oh! <laughs> the album will sell. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? <laughs> now, but what if your purpose is to clear touts from a particular area? There are touts that always fight and smoke weed, and you want to clear them there. And you have two brother Mike proposing to you, brother Mike Tyson, brother Mike Jackson. Which one will you marry? Tyson. By the time he comes there with his glove, they'll be like, hey, man. <laughs> Is somebody getting what I'm saying? So your purpose determines who you marry. You need a purpose for life before you choose a partner for life. Very, very important. Okay? Third thing, when it comes to choosing a life partner, is now, or, or being ready, is now knowing the qualities you are looking for. You know, the Bible says, he that findeth a wife, findeth what? A good thing. That's Proverbs 18, 22. He that finds a wife, finds a good thing. Listen, young men, when they say you should find a wife, they didn't actually mean literally go about finding a wife. Because that's what we've always interpreted that scripture to mean. That just go and find. Just go and find. Just do like this. And start finding. That's not really what they were trying to say. You can't physically find a wife. Or let me say it this way. You can't physically find a virtuous wife. You can find any wife. But if you're looking for a prudent woman, Proverbs 19.14 says, wealth and houses are things you can inherit from your father. He said, but a prudent wife comes from the Lord. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Proverbs 31 also says, a virtuous woman who can find. So you really cannot just find by manual labor. You need to partner with God to find. And the challenge with partnering with God to find, many people think, and ladies also, they think that just busy praying that God lead me to my spouse. God leads me to my spouse is how God leads people to their spouse. Usually that's not how. You will not even see anywhere in scripture where God told someone, Brother James, that Sister Lydia is your wife. Have you seen anything like that in the New Testament? Even in the Old Testament, there's nothing like that. You won't see Brother James, the Lord speaks to you, you're a proper gift prophecy. That God might say, no. What God will lead you to do, God will lead you in the place of value. He will lead you in the place of impact. He will lead you in the place of service. I don't know if somebody's getting what I'm saying. That's how you are going to find your spouse. God will lead you to the place of value and to the place of service. While you are being led in that area, you will now meet your husband or wife. The reason why many people have not heard God regarding who they should marry is that they are, they are thinking God will just show them somebody's face. A lot of times when people see those things, not God, it's just your heart, it's who you like. You notice that you see who you like. You're not seeing somebody you don't like. It's somebody you've been thinking about. It's your mind that just confirmed to you. It's nothing God. 
Let's look at scripture. There's a time they were looking for a wife for Isaac. That guy prayed before he left the house. The servant that was looking for a wife for Isaac. He prayed for Elab. But you see, he did not pray that God just take me to a woman. That's not what he said. Because many people have read that scripture to mean that God, you know, showed him his wife. That's not what happened. He prayed that, Lord, show me, uh, take me to this place. Any woman that I meet that has so and so and so values. He mentioned specific qualities. This is why I said you must know the qualities. He mentioned the woman I meet that is by the well. She's doing the right thing at the right time. She's by the well, fetching water when she ought to be fetching water. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? You see, he wasn't led to a dating site. Oh, the prophetic grace is coming on me again, prophet. <laughs> prophet, what's happening? Is it because you're in the room? <laughs> the prophetic grace is coming on me. He, he wasn't led to a dating site, you see. He said, lead me to where they are fetching water. And any girl I meet there that is home, number one, for her to fetch water, it means she's homely, she's helping her home. You want to marry, but you can't help in the house where you are. <laughs> you want to run your own family, but you're not helping the family where you belong to. You are not cooking now, so how, what will you do with your family when they come? Prophet, they asked one young bride, what was the biggest surprise you had in marriage? She said she was surprised that she had to cook every day. I said, no. <laughs> What do you think uh, people do in marriage? All the children you see running around, what do you think is, is not energizer battery they are using? <laughs> they are eating every day. And somebody's cooking every day for them to eat every day. Is somebody get what I'm saying? So he said, the woman that I see by the well, that means she's helping at home. Number two says she will be kind to give me water and give my camels water. It was qualities he was picking on. Hardworking, homely, kind. You know, most, most ladies are only kind to eligible bachelors. Why am I prophesying tonight? <laughs> most ladies are only kind to eligible bachelors. That guy was not an eligible bachelor. He was an old man, but he was looking for a wife for his master's son. Sometimes the people that are coming to you are not the people, but they're the ones that will connect you. Mm. So God will lead you to the place of value. Where God led um, Rebecca to, to find her husband, was a place of service. Same thing with Ruth. God did not lead Ruth to a place of marriage. She was serving her mother-in-law. And she was working. It was a place of service. So if you want to be led where you find your husband, let God speak to you. Say, join the choir. Join the ushering. Join this. Join. That's how God is going to lead you. He's not going to say, God is not going to lead you to John. He's going to lead you to join. I'm preaching good. Come on. Come on. Come on. Sister, I said, God is not going to lead you to John. He's going to lead you to join. You will join a church. You will join a unit. You will join a department. You will join the prayer group. You will join something where you will serve. That's how it happens. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? How did I meet my wife? I suffered before I met my wife, prophet. I suffered. I suffered. I had scouts in different big churches, redeemed, winners, everywhere. I had my friends that were there. I said, look, I'm looking for a good Christian girl. If you meet any Christian girl, just call me. I'm serious. And sometimes they'll call me. They'll say, Pastor, start coming. We've seen somebody. Come now. <laughs> and I'll jump into my car, move, beat traffic, do everything. <laughs> Get there. That's when I knew that it's difficult for a human being to find your real spec. Only God knows your real spec. <laughs> Only God. God knows who you will like today and who you will still like in 10 years from now, 20 years from now. You know some people you are picking, you will like them for this week. <laughs> you will like them for this year. But you see, marriage is such a long journey. That's why I tell people, you must have to separate your needs from your wants. There's a difference between your needs and your wants. Your wants are the things that will make everybody clap for you, make everybody happy for you, make you even happy now, but they, are, they might not be your needs. What do I mean? Suppose I cannot marry someone that is not a graduate. That's not your need. That's your want. Your need is somebody intellectually compatible with you. Because somebody can be a graduate and you can't have a serious conversation with them. You can't even, I mean, they are not on your level at all. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Because the way they are talking is off key. So what you really want is not a graduate. You want somebody mentally compatible. If you say you can't marry a graduate, that means you couldn't have married Bill Gates, you couldn't have married Michael Dell, you couldn't have married Mark Zuckerberg because they were not graduates at the time. So that's what you are saying. No, what you're talking about is somebody intellectually compatible. 
So I must marry tall. He, what, what are the qualities you want in a man? Tall. Most ladies start from tall. He can be a tall killer. He can be a tall liar. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? That's not what you want. You don't want a tall man. You want a man that can talk in tongues. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? <laughs> that can provide spiritual security when you need it. That your tall boy you're looking for. When your child is sick, will he be crying more than you? <laughs> or will he pray in the Holy Ghost? Is somebody getting what I'm saying? So you need to know what you really want versus what you need. A lot of ladies don't know what they want. They're just, you know, saying things that everybody says, tall, dark, and handsome. No. Are you getting what I'm saying? So they were calling me everywhere, everywhere, until one time. Do you know how God led me to my wife? God planted in my heart that she organized a reunion for my set in secondary school, 10 years after school. That's it. Organize a reunion. It was a thing of service. It was while I was doing that, that I met my wife. So some of you, you've been praying about husband and wife and God is talking to you about service. That's the answer. He has answered you. Because many people are thinking, you are confusing supernatural with magic. Just because God is supernatural doesn't mean he's a magician. They are different. In magic, you get something out of nothing. In magic, something just appears. But when it's a miracle, really, it's step by step. There's a process to it. So as you're praying, oh God, I want a husband. God said, I won't send you to John. I'll send you to join. That's where your answer is. Come on. Is somebody getting me?